This is a water pump from a VAG VW engine. It's a uh, 1.4 petrol where this comes from. And it's obviously failed on this car, so we can really see all this crud here, which is coolant and antifreeze, which is kind of solidified almost, because these pieces are, they're very kind of sandy almost. So it's a bit of a state. It was weeping as well. So uh, that's how we could tell it was, uh, it was a dead pump. Uh, I thought it might have been leaking from here, because this is the uh, kind of O-rings, but it's obviously leaked from inside this impeller here. There must be an O-ring on here. So I just wanted to open this up and have a quick look, because it's quite a complicated beast. Now it sits on the car. If you look down at the engine, it sits on this side. So it's the other side to the regular place for coolant pumps. They're normally on the uh, timing belt and it's part of the timing belt system. But for the 1.4 TSI engine, it's uh, 2014, it actually lives on the other side and it's driven by a belt and it's driven from the exhaust pulley. So uh, it's, it's a belt that comes up to the uh, exhaust cam camshaft and then that actually drives the pump around. So it is fairly straightforward to replace. You've got, I think it's five Allen bolts or these kind of hex bolts and then it just comes off. But um, it was actually leaking, if uh, you imagine looking down at the engine, it was leaking from underneath here, this section. So it wasn't leaking from the O-ring section. It was actually leaking from the other side. And this is the side where the belt actually looks from. I'll show you the new one on the engine as well. But it's a bit of a crusty mess and um, yeah this is a lot more stiffer than I thought. I don't know if that's normal or not but um, yeah there's no movement or rattle in there but it's clearly leaking from under here. There's a lot of moisture and seepage and dirt and you can even see a clean mark here where it sprayed the coolant around and kind of cleaned the, that line there but um, now uh, what have we got here one of these pipes is the coolant that comes in from the radiator because it's a lot cooler and then the other one is um, the well they all seem to be hot returns so this is how you would see the pump if you look into the engine bay the engine is here and you'll have the exhaust cam here and that's driving that pump. There's a belt that comes right up and around. And these are the pipes that take and return the coolant. I believe this one is the cold entrance from the radiator. So that goes into there. And this is a hot return because this pipe is certainly hot. And this one's the, the cooler one. So the cool one, yeah, that makes probably sense actually because the cool one comes into here and it must be driven by the impeller because it comes in through here. Driven by the impeller in there, you can kind of make out this little turbine in there and that will force then the coolant out of these various pipes. So that's one of them there. I believe this one goes off to the heater matrix in the dash to give your, um, your interior some heat. This one and this one here. This, I think, is just kind of like a very small pipe and um, another one here that goes off to other parts like the um, charge cooler, which is liquid cooled by the radiator, by the cold water. And then, you know, it brown stuff internally into the engine. So these would be the feed and return for inside the engine block itself. And we can make out, there's some sort of valve here as well. It could be a thermostat, but I'm gonna take this black shroud off and have a look. Here's the part number of this one, if I can make it out. 04E121042. And yeah, 2014. So I'm gonna pull all these bolts off and we'll have a look, see what we can get into. There's quite a few of them. But it's interesting how you've got all these little areas here. It's quite a complex pump. But uh, yeah, so the coolant goes in behind and then so it looks like return goes through here. There's a return. Um, where does that one go? Yeah, it's quite a lot of channels and 
very complicated for what it is. But yeah, you can just about see daylight through there. So that's this channel. This must be a return then, I guess. There's return comes through here and then back out to the hot, to the radiator, hot return pipe. You can make out a little valve in there, possibly a uh, thermostat as well, opening and closing. Uh, there is an electric pump on these cars as well, just to keep things circulating, especially if you switch off um, after a long hot run, it will keep um, you know, various circuits cool by pumping the water around. Um, this one here must do something because there's a valve there and then I guess water comes in this way I suppose as well into the engine block. So yeah, there's a lot to it and there's quite a big mechanism here as well. So let's get all these off and we will see what's in behind. Because I want to see the impeller really, that's the interesting bit and possibly how this system works. All right, what we're looking at, we're looking at, yeah, T, T30s, like that, and same here, yeah, T30s, all right, let's get this open. Okay, let's do this top assembly first, this little area here, let's get this out. Oh, they're monsters, aren't they? Because I presume you can kind of hot swap, but you can swap this piece separately, I guess. Aha! Uh -huh. Right, so that's just like a little mechanism. So there is, you know, return here. This is a hot pipe and a very tiny little aperture for that return. So that one goes back as well. Um, can't remember where that goes. I know these head off towards the charge cooler and there's a feed that goes to the turbo as well and returns via the uh, charge cooler, but okay. So that's just that. And in here, what's this then? It's a funny little thing. There's, yeah, so water must head back down through there because this, this is hot or return through here. And where does that go? That goes to, yeah, so this leads to our return. So this is the return to the radiator. So, um, that's that one. This is the cool, cool um, feed from the radiator because this is the cooler pipe when you touch them. Right, let's have a look. It's, it turns because it's got this locking ring. So it's obviously something you can remove. Obviously an O-ring here. In fact, you can actually remove that look. That's quite nice. So that feels good quality. Unlikely that would fail anytime soon. It's a shame that it's obviously gone on this impeller, you see, in here. But uh, how are we doing with this? There's probably a special VAG tool to do this. Because it looks like it turns, doesn't it? Right, we've got this thing out now. This was really difficult to remove, so doing that in situ would have been a mission. Um, Probably with the right tool, it's probably a lot easier. So this must be the thermostat then. This must be, uh, yeah. Valve. Um, thermostat. Must open or restrict flow or allow flow, depending on the uh, heat of the water, I guess. Yeah, a lot smaller than I thought it would be. This little pin sits in there. There's a little ball bearing at the bottom, actually. And here we can see, just about see into the propeller, the uh, impeller. So this, yeah, this stays closed. And at some point this must get forced open. It's quite a strong spring, so there's quite a lot of force needed there. Certainly wouldn't be done with just a trickle of water, maybe under high pressure or certainly high temperature. Say so there's nothing really that controls that because that sits in like that. And, hmm. Maybe it controls flow because there is a gap here. And when that sat in there, it does allow water to go into that gap 
and this isn't watertight, so water would flow down the middle of that. So this must allow a little bit, a certain amount of water flowing at all times. And then perhaps when, when something triggers it, does it close off? Because I suppose that would, that would close to the point when it blocks the flow. But certainly as a default, it seems to be open, allowing water to come through. Just trickles through and then returns. So it's some sort of return. Because this was the, what was this one? This was the, oh, this was the cold feed, wasn't it? So cold, cold feed comes in and then goes into the impeller. The impeller must force that water in, suck it in, and then it just flies up here, up this one. And then, yeah, so some water then is going up into here. And then when it's up here, it's going into that channel, which is a return. And then off to this pipe and off to this pipe. So yeah, okay. Right, so let's carry on, I think. We need to get other bits off. So I think we get access from the rear now. So let's get all these off and see if we can get the plastic shroud off. Impeller, a lot smaller than I thought, but this is where the seal has leaked. Um, I mean, that seems perfectly intact, although there is crud there, a lot of crud down here, but that seems okay. So I think that surface mating to in here in this groove. That seems to be okay. So I think it was leaking through this side here. Oh, another one of these has just popped out. Oh, there we go, so there's another one. That was like that, wasn't it? So another one of these spring mechanisms. Again, that was like that, wasn't it? Again, very similar tension, but it does allow water to go through it. You can see better how this is, works now. It just slides up and down this collar, and as it needs to, it can actually restrict or allow flow. And there are, you know, there are gaskets here as well. So what was our what was our cold feed again? This was the cold, wasn't it? This is cold coming in, and then through inside here into here and then it gets thrown out and then I guess it's into the engine that way so that's how it goes isn't it because we've got our cold in comes through this small valve sucked into here and then sent into the engine because that's internal to the engine in here and that there's a little tab here to remove this gasket if you need to this, what was this again? This was up to here, wasn't it? Again, that's just some sort of open and close, kind of like a thermostat or pressure relief, allowing water to, yeah, flows in through here and then up. So yeah, very complex, <coughs> but cool to see. So I guess I can't get any further with that. You know, removing this, which is going to be an absolute mission, but inside here, there'll be some sort of an O-ring. And that's what's failed, so it's on this side, because all the coolant seeped into here. And this, well, this isn't really sealed against the elements, because that's against the engine block. And in here, I think this is just metal to metal, because water's not supposed to be in here, because there's a belt here, driving this around. So water's just got through there, seeped through and it's crusted up. It must have been there for quite a while, looks looks gross. But yeah, the water would have been on this side. 
But yeah, no play at all in that. So it just must have worn away, I guess. You imagine how often that's turning. Constant turning, constant heating and cooling over time and things fail. But yeah, certainly these, these gaskets here are really high quality. Certainly nothing wrong with them. That is inside. I don't think there's anything else to play with. But um, yes, yeah, a very complex channels of water. See, this is split. So you've got some channel of water going in here and you've got one kind of like a quarter maybe going off to this pump. I believe that was feeding the uh, radiator in the dashboard, the heater matrix. So that was that feed for that one. Uh, like I say, yeah, cold comes in top. And then uh, that valve assembly allows it to go through here and back around as well if it needs to. So, very cool. So that's that. There is the pump. With the uh, two of those. They're different sizes, so not interchangeable. And then here, yeah, this was the other top of the top of the uh, valve here, block, and that allows water to head up here and then through this one. So pretty neat. Yeah, so I've looked at the part number, and these are indeed little thermostats. So they're pretty cool, they're pretty neat. So they must open and close um, with temperature and pressures, one of the two, I guess. But uh, I suspect if we put it into boiling water, it might uh, it might change. But uh, yeah, there we go. So another thermostat. So two thermostats in this housing. Um, their part numbers, by the way, are 04E121113G and 04E121113, I think that's an E. Yeah, so there they are, two thermostats. Just showing you in detail there how this is made up. So you've got the blades here. So they bring the water in this way, I believe, and then channels down through and out. So let me show you here. Water comes in the top and then water comes in the top and then down through this way like that. So uh, yeah, quite nice and smooth. That's how it goes and then each one of these allows the water to be sent over here and then I guess it goes this way straight through. Quite nice smooth paths. Now I'm presuming when this was assembled this gasket wouldn't have been stuck on like that because there's nothing to hold it. So that would have been in like this. And just over time, it's welded itself to the metal rather than stay in the channel there. So that's that's how it should have looked, like that. And then this is the piece when you get assembled together like that. Not too bad for muck, but you know, there's a little bit of crud in here. I guess, you know, that's water over time, heat and cooling. This part is 04E121117 and it's E. So that's all the component parts for the thermostat and the water pump. Many thanks for watching.